Hello again. Welcome back to the June Garden Walk. The garden at this time of year is going through one of these phases. The leaf canopy, as I mentioned last time, has come out. But there's some different plants. A lot of the early stuff has now gone back to bed underground until next year. Or at least until the autumn. But we've got some others up here. We've got some of the the lovely irises that come out and in behind this fantastic laburnum growing there really a beautiful tree and, and it's just at its prime just now I'm standing here beside the pond which at this time is, is quite overgrown but you get an idea of this as well, the light and shade that this kind of garden creates. Like many of you, it's been very hot and dry, but it's all relative. What, what we call hot, I mean, we've, yesterday it was, it was 22 to 24 degrees which to many of you I know may sound a relief and would be quite cool but for here in Scotland what we Scots are used to and what the plants that we've selected have been accustomed to it's very hot and also very dry I've come up under, under the laburnum and I'm going to be quiet a minute the traffic would quieten down that. See if you can hear the bees. Because this laburnum is just humming. Through there at the back we've got honeysuckle, wild plants growing. And here a lovely fern looking very dramatic in this sort of lighting. I really love the dramatic effects that the light brings. And everywhere across the garden you'll find the yellow Welsh poppy, the Papaver cambricum it is now called. Lovely and yellow. And, and yellow seems to be a theme at this time of year. So let's walk around a bit more. The bulb bed up beside the pond is, it's hot and dry so it's kind of been forced down a bit earlier than normal. The Ramondas here, we had some of the other Ramondas out earlier. This is my Ramo a pink form of Ramonda Myconi. But this bed's a bit, um, we haven't got anything really in the, in the summer in this bed. It kind of goes down now as the, all the early growth seeds around and then of course it will spring back into action a bit later when the, the autumn, late summer and autumn as the stuff comes out. So by the, by the pond of course they've got trees and I have to water these. These are, it's, I don't like watering the garden in the hot dry weather because it doesn't necessarily do the plants long term good. It, it can tend to bring the roots to the surface where it's hotter and drier rather than encouraging them to explore down into the depths. But certainly there's a lot of the stuff in containers and pots that would simply die out if we didn't water them. On the wee island, dactyl arises. Some of the few healthy ones we've got left are actually up here. We have lost so many over the last few years to the to the to those diseases but i'm hoping they'll come back and we can re-establish them but so let's move round from the follow the yellow trail if you like the mechanopsis cambrica they, they seed everywhere and i don't mind that what we'll do is, is 
as they go over we'll just go around them and we'll snip back all the stems that the flowers of petals have fallen off and the seed heads we'll take them off so that to, to minimize the amount of seeding and also that encourages further flowers to come so it extends the flowering season and of course other plants we allow to seed around it the digitalis the foxgloves up here the a lot of the plants you can see you can see how they're suffering in the in the dry the foliage over there of colchicums which are now resting underground and we'll get the flowers coming up and starting in, in August, late August and September but you can see how the if we didn't have these self seeders the, the pop of our cambricum, the Welsh poppy the aquilegius this is a self seeded corner including the acer this acer is seeded down from this this one up here again a beautiful tree beautiful structure multi-stemmed but everything here we've got the we've got aquilegius this white camasius this the purpley blue violety camasius Salmisius. The Salmisius is not self seeded, but everything else is. Silenis provide these little spots of pink. And another area that I've given up trying to keep the gravel free of plants, I'm fighting a losing battle, so I'm just selective, being selective what that's allowed to seed in. Some more dactyl arises in there and Salmisius. There's this corner up here, the, the dark corner. Where early on we had all the wonderful spring bulbs appearing. And now up in here the darkness, the sunflower. It's been out for some weeks now. The Adoronicum. I can see some of the Corydalis looking really dry and burning off but they tend to survive it as long as it doesn't happen every year up here there's more Camasias, we planted more Camasias but again this is a bed that in previous videos and just a few weeks or a month ago you couldn't see the ground, it was, it was just full of the early early stuff that started flowering in February with, the, with some of the snowdrops and then all the erythroniums that came they're all down here now in seed so they'll seed around you can see all the, the leaves and the crocus burnt off and actually I, I don't mind that I think that's quite a, a natural sight to see all that old growth but what you'll see there is here an allium coming new so among the old growth we'll take out this I don't want that a wee epilobium thing so we'll take that aim um, a whole bunch of alliums fresh new leaves just coming up now as everything else is burning down and this allium will itchy that will flower late in the late into the summer and peonies. These are these are actually some of these are going past their base now, they're dropping their petals. But this is pe peony Wallachi. Not Wallachi, no, that's the allium. The wood wardii. I think its proper name is peony vichii, former wood wardii, or var wood wardii. And this is a seedling from it seeding out into the path and there's a number of seedlings around the main plant so Doronicum sits there and we look straight down this line from the from the house where I sit up in the 
the house there and I look straight down this slightly winding path to the to this birch tree at the bottom. And at the moment I just see this golden sunflowers pointing out, reaching out to the sun from the, the dark and the shade, but they do quite well in there, as you can see. But above the rhododendrons that were all in flower, they're suffering the heat and dryness and their flowers are just wilting and flopping. They're not going through the natural process, they just sort of turning brown and dropping their petals, they'll just wilt and flop, showing that they really are suffering, just like I am in this heat. Because it is lovely, the, these wild areas, if you read my latest Paul Blog Diary online, which if you haven't found it you can get from on, on srgc.net and just check out Ian Young's Ball Blog. And you'll be able to read the latest edition where I write about the, the plants and the wild inspirations that inspire our planting style in the garden. And our whole method where we accept plants that many might call weeds. But we don't call them weeds, we call them wildflowers. Because these bring variety and interest to the garden. Help the biodiversity. So just standing here you know, above my head, it's the colour variation of the different trees. So you've got the, the green acers, red acers, pines in the foreground here, a sorbus that's not, sorbus hopehensis isn't happy, we're getting die back on it and I'm not sure if it's all got to die back, there looks to be reasonable growth at the very crown but I'm not sure it's going to survive and I don't know if that's the heat or some of these pathogens that have been coming in and affecting some of the, that family. And then the birches and ketoniasters and many others. Plenty of trees in a garden. And of course the rhododendrons, even if they don't flower, produce these wonderful foliage effects. So well, let's just head down. But the grasses and the aquilegias and the the next wave of big colour will actually come from the things like the digitalis that are everywhere and some of the aconites that are out and of course the lilies. But for the meantime we walk through the Camasias that seed around. Oh, I see the, there's more. This is another wave we're getting. I'm just spotting. Coming out, of course, the Arisimus. There's a whole bunch of them. We'll pop up in here. Can't see on this screen because the light is shining in it. But there's a whole lot more coming up in here. And just more of the same. Down here the troughs, are neat. they need watering. It's mostly the Arrhenius that's out just now. They don't mind the sun, they can take a degree of the... They can take a degree of um, dry, dryness. And then some little primulas. They're pretty tough, some of these primula types. But a range of little troughs.
but I'm just going to come around and finish up here. In the shade at the moment where the, the troughs and the raised beds are and the garden like me suffering from the heat and the dryness. These are, as I say, the, the troughs like the, the potted plants up by the ponds, the trees and that, we do need to water those. But for the most part the garden has to take what nature throws at it. But as I say, there is a wildness to it just now. Some plants can take the heat, the Mechanopsis here. They've not been doing well this last few years. Too hot and dry for them, but there's good foliage growth. Fewer flowers this year. And the flowers there are are shorter and not so blue as they usually are. But it's a good place to stop now and I'm going off to get a drink and thanks for being with me if you've stuck around this. And I hope the summer is good for you and you and your plants can survive what summer throws at us. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.